as our group here as we start day one. Give us a visual. Let's plan it. Let's be great at everything we do. If it buys us one win, two wins this year, that might be the division. Okay? That's how important everything is. Okay? Uh, for our outfitters, 20 bucks starts 20 bucks. today. So, <laughs> up, 20 bucks. Got it? Oh, sh. Account coaches. You uh, too. Oh, sh. What about DHs? I'm in. Mookie will, Mookie will cover me. You're going to be broke, bro. You can it. JT is going to be broke. <laughs> A great season. I, I think on the micro, the, the most highlighted uh, end of the season, postseason, uh, certainly a failure. Rookie Betts turns around and watches that go for Collinworth. It is stuck out. Padres take the lead. One strike away. I've stopped playing that game and uh, really sort of trying to be present and look forward towards 23, but you know, you're always trying to get better. You come to expect the unexpected, especially in October baseball. So uh, shock, I don't think captures it, but we feel good about the group we have right now. That being said, we need to add some talent to it as well. Yeah, we were back in the office Monday. I think we drove back from San Diego on Sunday, back in the office on Monday. Our mentality is like, okay, how, how do we start to get over this? Is like to get back to work and focus on the following season. I think, you know, analytics has taken on this bad connotation and how I think our coaching staff and we view it as like, it is really just preparation. You cannot uh, predict what happens in a baseball game or any sporting event. And it's very easy to go back in hindsight and say, hey, we should have done something else. Well, of course, because we know what happened. The one thing we feel very confident in is, is come spring training time, like we will be putting out a championship caliber team. Kirsch was and is our number one priority. I believe he was my first call um, on free agent pitching and just wanted to get a sense for where he and Ellen were and what their thoughts were. And he was pretty convicted that he wanted to come back. And so for us, it was easy from there, just making sure that we did everything we could uh, to bring him back in the fold. Yeah, so I'm coming back. Uh, I think it's official. It might not be official. They're saying they're nearing a deal, but by the time y'all see this, it'll be official. So I'm going to come back to LA for another year, and we're super excited to get back out there. You know, you got to go home and think about it for a minute, but this is where we wanted to be, and we just couldn't leave yet. So this is, uh, we're excited to come back for another year and hopefully do some special things. We are here for our eighth annual KC Live. This is our Dallas fundraiser every year and it is a country music benefit concert. And this year we are pumped to welcome Darius Rucker to the stage. We've already raised more money than we ever had before at a little over 1.7 million and, uh, and counting. So it's just gonna be a great night. Get to celebrate uh, the amazing beneficiaries of Kershaw's Challenge. Uh, well, thanks for being here, guys. Appreciate it. It'll be a good night. Darius, Darius put on a good show. I actually played golf with him today at, uh, yeah, and he's really good. Way better than me. Yeah, really good at golf. So he says he plays like six days a week, though. So I was like, oh, well, that'll do it. So, what's up, guys? Yo. How are you, man? Good. How are you? I'm good. Did you get a nap in? I did. Nice. I'm good. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, man? How are you doing? How'd you do today? I hung in there. You hung in there yeah, today? Yeah, I don't think I made a complete fool of myself. Okay, so that's the main thing. Yeah.
He spans so many different generations, which I think is really fun. A lot of our parents know him as Hootie and the Blowfish. Um, all of my friends, we love Darius Rucker, and so I think he's gonna be an incredible performer tonight. Darius is my wife. This is Alan. Hi, good to see you. Good to see you again. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. How, how was he today? He was great. We had a blast today. Good. It was a party. I'm so good. For me, giving back community is part of being alive, you know, helping people and, and doing what you can. So when, like I said, when I get a call from friends and something this cool, I'm in. All right, one, two, three. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage Dodgers is brought to you by Cadillac. Who are the Dodgers? The Dodgers is an organization that's one of the most famed organizations in all of sports. And why? Because there's a, a consistent uh, level of excellence every single year. It's not an organization where we just look good in a uniform, we like the beach, we're good guys, uh, we have great weather, uh, we have a great ballpark, F that. Underneath these beautiful uniforms are tough, badass men, ball players that are gonna cut your throats. Jason Harris, stand up. Tell the guys why you want to play for Los Angeles Dodgers. <laughs> Expectation, period. Like, we're going to fall short no matter what. Um, I was in one of the other clubhouses in the game last year when we saw you said the team was going to win the World Series. Yeah, you fell short, but it. Like, what was the expectation? That's why we're showing up every day, period. JD, stand up. Why did you uh, sacrifice millions of dollars to play for the Los Angeles Dodgers? It's a winning organization and every year there you guys are in it. Every year come, you know, October, there they are, the Dodgers, and it's a chance to begin the playoffs and got a taste of it a couple times and it's one of those things where the normal season just seems dull. It's, the playoffs is what you want to play for. This is black and white. And the question is, is you guys, we, myself included, got to ask ourselves, are we in or are we out? Thank you very much. Let's have a great day and uh, make it a good one. Thank you very much, guys. Hey, you look sexy right now, bro, with your earring, the hair, the glasses, you know, the arm. Take off your sexy. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know why. You look it. You look it. <laughs> Morning, JD. Nice to have Morning. you, JD. Morning, JD. Thanks, guys. Gonna be your uh, walk-up song, JD. Please, JD. I don't know yet. Probably the same <laughs> one I've had my whole life. <laughs> JD, can I get a picture with you, please? I've never changed it. Thank you. Appreciate you can call it a superstitious, <laughs> I guess. Superstitious? Maybe. But superstition can be erratic, unreliable. That is not JD Martinez, who's developed into one of the more consistent hitters in the game. The Dodgers acquired Martinez in the offseason, putting him in Dodger blue for the first time in a career that is entering its 13th season. A five-time All-Star, the 35-year-old veteran with playoff experience is expected to shore up the lineup with his bat. Hey, Miggy, you got me, bro. You got me, bro. Bro, we're 20 minutes early. What am I going to do for 20 minutes out here? Enjoy the life. What's up, bro? Hey, bro. JD obviously has been one of the more dynamic, clutch, right-handed hitters in baseball over the last five, six, seven years. You know, his first half last year was really good and second half kind of fell off. And for us, it's about making a bet. It's making a bet on his talent, his work ethic, his makeup, talking to him this off season. He was so driven to be great again, and it's a bet we were comfortable making. 
I just want everybody to know, JD came to a baseball game <laughs> and did not bring a glove. Fuck <laughs> it, okay? Came to spring training. I haven't had a glove in three years. I got Mookie Betts glove. It's got gold on it. Hopefully it works. It better. <laughs> the guys were all over me because I didn't have my, my glove. I left it at home. I had to borrow Mookie's. Yeah. Mookie's glove. Yeah, don't try me like that. Don't try me like that. Hey, there's a lot of disrespect out here for the 2015 runner-up gold glove. JD throws right-handed. I never know that. There's a lot of disrespect out here, dog. You know that? This is getting out of control. I'm gonna have to put a stop to this. Your position is right over there. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to prove it. I'm out here with y'all. Let's go. We're going to right. Let's go. Yeah, the guys were just all over me, giving me a hard time, but it's cool. I enjoy it. I love it, honestly. Hey! I give it out a lot, so I got to take it, too. <laughs> Don't look for Martinez in the outfield. Look for him to be an everyday designated hitter, performing at the plate. Full season, maybe catching up to him a little bit this year. His average is dipped below 250, but a good-looking player. Ten years ago, after the Astros, the team that drafted Martinez, removed him from their major league roster, the Florida native headed to California to enlist the help of a swing whisperer named Rob Van Skoyak. Swing day, baby. I'm interested to see if we do like a, like one round of like the potentiation, just like a five, five, five as a warm up, and then we just swing, okay, just like wake the body up. Okay, let's go. You know, me and Rob go way back, you know, when he was flipping balls to high school kids and I was about to get released. <laughs> we started working together and every day, day in and day out, he was with me everywhere. I don't like how that one's soft. The back elbow? I mean, it's fine there, but I think you're a little playing with fire when that happens. Him and Craig, honestly, Craig Wallenbrock was the main piece. I met Rob through Craig. A lot of the stuff that they were talking about was making sense, and I had nothing to lose. His swing was pretty like disconnected, pretty all over the place. So, I mean, we kind of had to like start from the ground up and kind of start with his legs, his gather, his hands, and all that. I think he had to like let go of his old swing and just like commit to it and be all in and just be like, hey, I'm I'm doing this, I'm committed. Even you know when it's not going great, I've got to stick with it. I think it was the biggest thing. I hit rock bottom and I had to make a change and I said it's either do this or die pretty much and so I just committed and you know and here I am. I think you could connect it a little more. See how they're like going back a little quick? Just to like rush back. Okay. Try to change it up, different way of training for me. A lot of training with intent, trying to feel things, trying to move faster. <sighs> Every day I wake up, it's my body's different, so I got to find out how my brain is going to trick my body to do what it wants to do and not what I want it to do. I think he fell into some old habits um, the last like few years, so really think there's a good version in there that we can get out of them, and we're going to strive to really get the best version. And still think there's a lot more upside we can get out of them. <sighs> you know, completely changed my whole swing. Took it to Venezuela, and that was when it really kind of like was like, whoa, what is this type of deal? Went back out to Cali, and then just continued it throughout my career, and every year is kind of a new feel, but you know, the principles of what I've learned out there is still the same, and it's what's made me the hitter I am. That's really good. That's good. See the hips? Uh-huh. Then the lag behind it, wham. All right, let's go. Here. And the left-hander Jose Lopez deals. Ground ball down to third, picking it up the new third baseman Jansen Witte. A double play and Lux. 
is grabbing his right knee. That is uh, concerning. There was a uh, uh, torn ACL. It's uh, it's going to be the the season. Gavin is obviously crushed. It, it's a huge blow. Uh, my my heart just goes out to him. All of ours does. <laughs> is part of the hardest part of this, just kind of knowing like this year, this role was one of the, this opportunity you've been looking forward to for since the day you got drafted here. And yeah. Yeah, I think that's one of the hardest parts is I think every baseball player's dream is to play shortstop for, for the Los Angeles, <laughs> Los Angeles Dodgers. So um, yeah, I think that's one of the hardest parts. Dodgers fans, uh, I felt pretty much all the love and support uh, last night, this morning. Best fan base in the world, so, you know, can't thank them enough for, for all the love and support, and I really appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. When the GM from the Marlins uh, gave me a call, got the opportunity to realize that uh, it was going to be the Dodgers, and I, I got pretty excited because uh, of all the teams in the in major leagues, uh, coming back to the Dodgers will be a great opportunity for me to, uh, to live my dream once again. With Gavin Lux on the injured list, the next man up at short is Miguel Rojas, whom the Dodgers acquired in an off-season trade but the organization is not new to the Venezuelan native. His major league debut came with the Dodgers in 2014, before he was traded and spent the last eight seasons with the Marlins. Now, receiving this opportunity after, after a little while that I experienced many other things in another team, it feels like it's right. It's the right fit for me. It's the right time, the right opportunity. I spent a lot, a lot of years in Miami. But at the end of the day, uh, you, will, you, you could never say no to a trade to the Dodgers. It doesn't matter who's going down or, or, or it happens to, uh, to be injured, you, you gotta be ready, you know? If you're the guy on the bench and you gotta be a role player and you gotta be serving for your team, you gotta be ready for these opportunities. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, it happened to Loxy, and uh, I mean, that means uh, me playing shortstop. I mean, that's what I need to do, and, and like I say, I prepare for this opportunity and I'm, I'm gonna be ready for it. He's 34 now, a major league veteran and a willing mentor to the younger players such as 23-year-old Miguel Vargas. In the off-season, the pair worked out together in Miami, getting ready for spring in Arizona. ¿Cómo sientes cómo sientes la mano esa del el, el co? ¿Te acuerdas que hablamos de eso? Está más suave. Sí. Ahí no está no está como así para arriba, sino como que está. A day or two after our trade, you know, got a note that Vargas was in Miami working out with, with Rojas. And, you know, A, it's awesome that Vargas took the initiative and really wanted to do that. Yeah. And B, it's great what Rojas did and was so welcoming and really trying to mentor and help him defensively. Ahí, palma, ahí. Ahí sí necesitamos palma, viste? La bola pega y pum, se, se mete. A veces hay un video del... El que para acá es con la... Uh -huh. para acá con una malla. Busca la malla, busca la malla. Buena, exacto. Vámonos para segundo, antes que llueve. Esa, esa, bajito ahí. Pique. Buena. Buena, Rumi, soy. He was text me since the first day he was he got trade. And you know, the way he trying to help me every time, the way he explained me, everything that we do for me is more than more than help, it's, you know, it's a, a, lot of, a lot of things, you know, happen on the field and have a guy like him trying to help me every single day, it's, it's like, a, like a plus for me. No. Viste, viste que fácil cuando uno está abajo así, que está bajito, con las piernas, la bola se levanta y uno lo, uno nada más lo, la mano está suavecita, en vez de estar, en vez de... I have like little, little things that I don't even know about fielding, you know, positioning, my glove positioning, 
you know, working on my food for those players, you know, all the stuff. He helped me and he explained me in that great way that I can understand every time. Eso, manito, buena. Haz cuenta que poco a poco te vas yendo, te, te dando cuenta cómo lee. I know how hard it is when you're a young player in the game because uh, a lot of coaches, a lot of older players, they, they want to come uh, come to you and talk to you about stuff. So I, I'm trying not to overwhelm him. I just want him to be natural, you know, and he's going to be himself. He's, he's listening a lot and he's, he's watching what others are doing for him to actually pick up some things. So I just want him to kind of watch and learn his own path. Fíjate, cuando estamos haciendo la vaina ya, no nos da tiempo de hacer así. Sí. O sea, nosotros estamos así, estamos sentamos arrodillados y lo que hacemos es, pan, reaccionar, pan, sí. de una vez reaccionar a la bola. I don't want to say like a, it's a pressure. For me, it's more like a opportunity thing. I can spend time with this guy, you know, all the rocker room. You know, I got a lot of uh, great guys there inside and outside of the field too. And I'm just proud that I can be part of the group. Entrado, so. Put your guards down to be a team, right? Yeah. Honest. Offensively, like Goldie was saying, pile it on. Like, I'd love nothing more than the, you know, fourth inning, fifth inning, be like, hey, you're sitting down, you're sitting down, you're sitting down, right? So, I think it was around June or July, uh, Andrew called me in the office and said that uh, Tony Regans, who was the general manager of the WBC team, uh, you know, called Andrew and asked if I could be you know, the third base coach, I said, let me talk to Dave about it. They both said, uh, go for it, because it'd be great time to uh, represent, uh, you know, Team USA. If you see me, any type of movement going towards the outfield, any type of movement, you got free to go. We're, we're banking on a breaking ball right here. Let's say you got it high and you miss a song. Keep your head still. Or go to your wrist. Uh, go to your okay. wrist while you're out here. OK. Do so like your wrist. wrist. How are we doing like that? was just fun. Nobody brought their ego or anything. I think we're all here for uh, one thing, and that's to win. And uh, I think we all understand that. And you know, it's always uh, always fun when you get to play with your peers. Everybody's cool. Like if some somebody, I don't know some people are like, get out, don't come talk to me right now. You can come talk to me. <laughs> I, it, I come, I'm an open book. Come talk. So yeah. somebody like Dino has been in the game so long. He's done so many things, so many positive things, especially at that. Um, it's just a blessing to be a part of, and I get to have it every day. So. Uh, it's uh, something I'm, I'm going to use to my advantage. Again, game days, you know how it goes. Yeah. If you want to hit, it's in the first two groups. Rick, I'll, well, never, I'll never hit on the field. I got you. So, yep. I know that. Don't, uh, don't know where you're about that. But I'll, I'll do cage. Where are the cages? Down right there. Okay. You never gotcha. hit on the field? That's right. Nope. He hits 300, 25 homers, 100 ribbies. Get him on the field. Hi, <laughs> right, here we go. Play mode. I'm really excited. You know, it's good to hit, hit some BP off him and bring back some memories. You know, when uh, when I heard his name come off that uh, he's going to be on the staff, uh, I was really excited. And you know, he uh, he taught me to play the game the right way, and it was a big help early in my career. Got it, baby. It's uh, a pleasure to work with these guys. They're the best in the world. And for me to have a relationship with, uh, you know, Trout when I was with the Angels, you know, being in a locker room, bringing back old stories and, and new stories in today's games. Hey, I know how to hit barrels. Huh, Regs? Yes, sir. My job, our job is to get lit up, right? We'll go left side first, okay. get them done, get you guys done, and then I'll go four, six, three, six, get them done. Perfect. Okay. And then all, all good. Point wherever you want the fly ball. To your left. Okay. Well, catch it, stay there. Just okay. guide him where. Okay. Here we go. Five, five, four, three, six, four, three. I knew it was uh, it was going to be a mad rush. We had two and a half weeks. Uh, of just total time. We had a few, uh, you know, practice games, and then we were we were in real, uh, real games. Double place. 
I went around, I asked everybody like what their routine was, what can we do for them, the coaching staff, and whatever the guys needed, we, we got their work in. Uh, get him up. A lot of work in two and a half weeks, but uh, you know, we, uh, we got the work in. You see my pop-up to the catcher? I haven't done this in years, so I still have it, Tony. It is pretty cool that you get a game done now before three hours. I know it's, you know, your guys will get used to it, however you guys are going to adjust to it, but it's moving. If you're a home game Sunday and you're on the road, uh, you're home on Monday, you can go out and have dinner. Oh, yeah, it's way dope. It's, it's, it's going to be the, it's going to make the game better. Uh, to see them come out and work and uh, be a part of Team USA and representing the country, it's a great opportunity, great experience. Tell me when you had enough. These guys are really looking forward to playing baseball games with Team USA. Five. <laughs> Very nice. Good? You want any extra more grounders or are you good? Okay. Nice work, man. You got it. The opportunity of doing it and the experience uh, going through it day in and day out, the electricity in the crowd, uh, very loud, the stadiums were packed, you know, playoff atmosphere since, you know, from the first pitch to the last. And, you know, I got the chills at the end, uh, you know, when uh, it was, you know, I'm sitting down at third base and here he comes, Mike Trout, Shohei Otani on the mound, 3-2 count. It was almost like uh, everything was in slow motion. It was like a movie just listening to the crowd and they're all standing on their feet. I think the world uh, at that moment came together and everybody was watching this. He struck him out! You know, I kind of like what Michael said, uh, you know, when it was over, he said uh, he won round one. So uh, looking forward for round two. Noah Syndergaard has signed a one-year, $13 million deal with the Dodgers. Flame-throwing right-hander, 23 years old. He's a rookie. I mean, I was extremely fortunate and blessed to be able to compete in the World Series my rookie year. Here comes a 1-2 from the kid. Tied him up, ball away, strikeout number five. It was just a dream come true. It was pretty hard to top that. That's now 12 straight and back-to-back -back strikeouts as Syndergaard is taking over. I wish I could go back to being as naive and ignorant as I once was. I feel like this uh, search of knowledge and wisdom and having a growth mindset kind of had a um, might have been a double-edged sword a little bit, just discovering new things that worry and scare you a little bit more. Ignorance is bliss. I always had this work ethic to be like strong and, and lift and whatnot. You know, I always like you put effort and time into this kind of category of your work ethic, it will show on the field. But I was kind of directing my work ethic towards the wrong kind of strength activities and, and exercises, so I got tight in kind of the wrong places. Uh, Syndergaard holding his arm, and this is the worst case scenario that the Mets feared in sending him to the mound today. Yeah, I ended up tearing my lat, so I kind of shifted my, my training regimen to more mobility, athleticism, a lot of breathing stuff, which I think is all really important, but I should not have neglected that um, side of my training. I'm always training heavy and, and being strong. There's Noah Syndergaard, 6'6", 240 pounds, 27 years old. Really, Todd, looking to take a major step forward in 2020. Third strike, 98, the fastball from Noah Syndergaard. In 2020, I was up to 98, 99. Went to camp, felt great. Had a little bit of some elbow pain, but I could take some Tylenol or a leave, and it would be fine, so I didn't really think much of it. And then New York Mets starter Noah Syndergaard has a torn ulnar collateral ligament in his right elbow and is expected to undergo Tommy John surgery in the near future. All I could focus on was 
a rehab program. I uh, bought every recovery tool imaginable. My ice plunge, infrared sauna. I was in Florida, I'd go to the beach a lot. I think there's a powerful element to healing when it comes to being near the water and in the sunshine. I really embraced the challenge of, of that rehab and was fully convicted on, on being a better pitcher than I was before I had surgery. Um, and then I kind of went down a rabbit hole of trying to reinvent myself. So this is the Major League Plyo Wall, essentially a place where guys can do delivery-specific exercises, so different drills. Noah will do essentially his standard warm-up routine uh, that we've been having him do since he's been here, uh, just trying to get his body uh, primed to be in the right positions with the right intensity when it comes game time. Let's go a few standard pivots and then some of the preset ones. Great start. Great start. Last year there was a lot of outside inputs between different coaches, outside help I was seeking, and it was just like trying to throw something on a dartboard and hoping it stuck. Keep the hands moving, right? Those ones are like right here. But now that I'm, I'm here, I'm very thankful to work with all the pitching minds here, especially Rob. My role is the director of minor league pitching. Um, that doesn't necessarily just stop at minor league pitchers, uh, so I work quite a bit with uh, some of the major league guys. I mean, he's one of the best pitching minds uh, in the country, in our opinion. The 19 offseason going into 20, Alex Wood, Clayton Kershaw, and Kinley Jansen had done some work at Driveline and all interacted with him and worked with him in the reviews from those three guys was off the charts, and if you can connect with those three guys, we'll bet on you being able to connect with a lot of others. You know, for me personally, I just I just need honesty. You know, I'm not real sensitive, so just kind of tell me the truth of what I need to do, and he handles it well, and I think more than anything, he's not sensitive either, too, so I can tell him when it's like, this isn't working. That was big for me, you know, I was learning, you know, on the fly as well, you know, and all the stuff was coming around, so trying not to be too stubborn and listen and try to figure out what helps, and uh, he does a great job with that. His impact and scope has continued to grow year after year, and you know the incredible progress of so many of our pitching prospects, he has his fingerprints all over. I haven't pitched in two years, so I'm just pitching to get back out there, I'm showcasing I'm healthy and uh, you know, competing. The, the, the goal for this year is just to win at all costs. Last year, my first full season, when I came into spring training, I was still pretty lost in my bullpens, not even really knowing what it felt like to pitch pre-surgery. And then everyone's like, oh, this is just a Tommy John hangover. Everyone goes through it. By mid-season, you're going to be back up to 97. That didn't end up happening. That is a much different Noah Syndergaard than probably remember back for the New York Mets when he was the hardest thrower in the National League was consistently touching 100 that fastball this year has averaged 94 and it's been more sinker than it has forcing. Then I got traded to the, the, the Phillies they were in a win now situation they needed me to reform and win so they were just kind of throwing some duct tape on and there was just not a, a lot that I was convicted in. Noah Syndergaard on a World Series mound for the first time in seven years. It was a good year. I think anybody would have taken that. Like, There's no time on the DL, sub four ERA, but it just felt like pitching with a straight jacket on. I was in Newport Beach last December and I was packing up my, my things to send back home to Texas. We did a Zoom call with him pretty early on with Doc and our pitching coaches and our performance guys just kind of starting to sell ourselves and walk through what we do and how we do it. Uh, Noah basically cut us off and said, hey, you don't have to sell yourself to me. I fully get it and I'm all in. Signed with the Dodgers, I've been 
manifesting this for the last, I feel, 10 years or so. They have the best uh, player development in, in the major leagues. I was super eager to get out here. I got out here December 27th. I just wanted to make huge strides before spring training starts. And that just immediately tells you a lot of things you need to know about Noah. It's that he's incredibly dedicated. He's incredibly hardworking. He's a, he's a seeker is what I would call him. Someone who's looking around, trying to find answers, turning over rocks that people have never even heard of. Staying over the rubber. You know, sometimes you got to do that. You don't want to be like out here with everything, right? That's how it feels. Exactly, that's how it feels. I mean, that's what you've been saying. Like when you're getting too far downhill, Yeah, that's it, exactly. A lot of people see that like, oh, if he isn't throwing 100 miles an hour, then he isn't as good or he isn't good or, or like, what's the point? But like, Noah's a pitch maker. Noah can execute and he can do a lot of things with the baseball that I think are very, very unique that people undersell quite a bit. The progress from last year to this point has already been pretty dramatic and we feel like there's even more in there because last year he had a pretty good year without anywhere close to his best stuff. But I definitely think that there's still more left to my game. That's just uh, the nature of my personality and the hunger to get back to where I was and just the frustration of where it all went wrong. I just want to be free and let my strength and athleticism flourish and be directional towards my home plate. Ethan, you guys have these seats here. Noah, you're on the end. Ethan, you're in there. Noah, you're on the end. Right, yeah, whichever one of you. We're at Buffalo Wild Wings in Glendale, Arizona, here for spring training for the first annual Mookie Betts Wing Eating Invitational. I need one more counter. Who wants to count? It's a 45-minute time limit. Eat as many wings as you can. No dry rubs. We're looking at wet wings. We want clean bones. There'll be counters assigned to every participant. Uh, we're looking at a really tight competition. Last time, it ended in a tie at 69 wings between Rob Hill and Noah Huff. I expect it to be another close one today. Yeah, here you go. Here's a slobber towel. <laughs> Nick, what do you what do you got for your prediction? Who you got and how many? Uh, I'm saying Noah wins with 77. Rob comes in second with 72. All right, I like that. I like that. How many did you eat last time? 69. Yeah. Um, so how many are you going for now? Uh, between 80 and 90. So did you like? So did you practice eating 80 wings before? No, not before. As the rosters changed over the years, Mookie uh, stepped up in Kenley and JT's old spot, wanted to have the competition continue on, so we're really thankful to Mookie. How we let these people do this? <laughs> it's it's terrible for the health. No, it's horrible. You join us? You join us? <laughs> yes, it's great. I would never. <laughs> There's no amount of money you can pay me to do this. <laughs> Who, who's your favorite? Jose. Jose. Right here. Jose, how many meals have you had today? Half a meal. Half a meal. He's IT guy. He's computer and he eats. Thank you. <laughs> we do it every year at spring training. It's a big thrill for us because it combines major league staff with minor league staff, uh, staff that we see every day, staff we don't see hardly ever. Uh, you had so many groups of people here, and uh, and that's what really makes this place special. Everybody have their wings. Everybody got it? Hey, listen up. Listen up. Shut up. Listen up. All right. It's thanks for coming today. It's the only time we can get together once a year. My Narik Major League. I never forget where I come from, right? My Narik Major League with together. Beautiful day. And thank you. Mookie Beth, new sponsor.
One thing I'm noticing is uh, no one's really hammering through wings, unless your name's Noah. Everyone's kind of pacing themselves, which is interesting. But we'll see. We got a long way to go, so anything's possible. <laughs> Rob is drinking a mixture of ranch dressing and water. Do you think that's going to pay off? That's Why disgusting. Is he drinking? Nobody knows. Let's go. Let's go. X. Come on, boy. Come on. Rob has 70, but Rob has to swallow what's in his mouth. Because he's got at least seven wings in that mouth right now. Noah's at, Noah's at 66, so as long as Rob doesn't puke, Rob wins. And the winner with a new record of 70 wings. <laughs> Here we are. I've been waiting three years. Three years at a shot of redemption. There it is. Thank you. We did it. I'm in a bad spot existence wise. That's I swear boss. to God, you guys better throw strikes this year. I'll be so mad. 